Hello out there in uh, YouTube land. This is Mike from uh, P2P Amps. And uh, I'm going to start a little video series here about how I do uh, a Princeton Reverb uh, and, uh, and the methods that I use and kind of the steps I take. Uh, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but it's definitely the way I do it. So uh, I'm just going to kind of walk through some things and I'll add uh, the steps as I go along. This chassis here. Um, this is just a... Uh, a regular Princeton reverb type chassis. Um, got it from Hoffman, uh, Doug Hoffman at HoffmanAmplifiers.com. Uh, Doug's great. He ships things out really super fast and uh, all his parts are high quality and I've uh, been really happy with uh, the guys on the forum there. And, uh, and anyway, um, so first thing I do, step one, is uh, I, I put a little stamp here. I got some metal stamps. Um, they look like this right here. Bought them on eBay, pretty cheap. There, I, I believe these are Greenleys or Greenfields. Um, anyway, um, they weren't a lot of money, and I use them around here to to mark things. So, step one: I take this uh, chassis and I stick it over here on my vise, and I use a big old hammer there, about that size. And I go ahead and punch that stuff in there. Step one. Next thing I do is, here is my turret board. I do pre-fit all these parts. Got this from Doug Hoffman again. Great quality stuff. Um, I go take this over to my drill press and I go ahead and drill each corner like so. Next step is I kind of figure out in the chassis here exactly where I want this guy. Kind of place it. And then uh, I'll just take a screw Stick up through the chassis here. See if I can do this while holding the uh, the camera. Anywho, um, I start one hole, and um, let me see if I can do this. I'll start to screw one hole, and then basically I have a pivot place for this to go to, and I get it straightened up. And while this board is still in the amp, I go ahead and drill the chassis on my on my drill press. Once I get the second hole done, which I usually do kitty corner from the first hole, I go ahead and put a screw and a bolt in there to, uh, a bolt and a nut to hold it in place, and then I go ahead and drill the other two holes, and that keeps everything lined up. Uh, it's, it's real easy to mark them with a pin, drill them, and then nothing lines up and, and you're off just a little bit. So this kind of prevents One that from happening. shot here. I just stuck a little, uh, little nut there and a bolt and as you can see this guy's not going anywhere another thing you could do is you could measure or eyeball it i'm just, you know i'm pretty good at eyeballing stuff straight but you can measure it and put a piece of tape there as a guide kind of hold your board there drill that second hole so i'm going to go ahead and do that operation now All right, and then so we'll... i've got everything lined up i went and took my trusty tape and i just measured it over and made sure the other side so we're nice and uh straight with the board and turn on the drill press here and easy as that one more shot here got a piece of tape measured it up with my steel rule made sure everything was straight punch the second hole now all i got to do is come back and uh, get this guy and this guy you can really do it in any order you want and uh That'll save you a lot of headache uh, from okay, getting so anything out. Another little thing I like to do is I like to take a bit like this when I get through drilling any holes in these chassis, and just come in here and give them a little bit of a uh, deburr, just to countersink a little bit, and uh, that takes all those rough edges off the holes. And just really... All right, flip it over. Same treatment on the back side. Doesn't take much. All right, there it is, nice and smooth. The screw's going to be nice and flat. Now, the other thing that I do, and I'll just go through it right now is all these holes right here, well, probably not so much on the uh, on your power tubes and your rectifier here, but a lot of times on uh, certain chassis, these holes aren't big enough because they were set for, uh, let's say, a fender sheet metal screw. I don't use sheet metal screws. I put a 
screw and a nut, a lock nut on there with a little bit of Loctite. And uh, I think it's a better job. I do the same thing over here on your filter cap. Output tranny, power tranny. I bolt everything in there. I don't use any sheet metal screws on these chassis. Um, it's just a little bit of difference there. I think, you know, a lot of little things add up to one big thing and it matters. So, again, this now is the way I've got I the, uh, I've got these standoffs. Again, I get from Doug Hoffman. I've got them just kind of hand tight here in the chassis. And I'm going to go ahead and pre-fit the circuit board, making sure that everything is good to go. And then I can pull it out to work on it. There's the uh, pre-fit. Uh, turret board using uh, some standoffs, 5.8 standoffs that I got from Doug Hoffman. And uh, they're great. I use a lot of those things. Um, this board is real good and solid, not going anywhere. Uh, I love that I have some space underneath to run wires and uh, some of the shielded cables I use for inputs and uh, things like that. Uh, I can also tuck some wires underneath and uh, a lot of times on these turrets, I think we'll see later on in the video, uh, that I drill holes in all the points where wires are going to actually connect to the turret. Uh, that way I can run them down towards the chassis, keep them laying on the chassis. Um, these amps are extremely quiet if you uh, if you take a little patience, a little time wiring them up right, and uh, and you know, paying attention to uh, how how you do your 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 wiring. So uh, anywho, um, I'm going to go ahead and move on and uh, show next you the step next I step. take is uh, mounting of the. Uh, the output transformer. As you can see, I've got uh, one that uh, is for a deluxe reverb, so it's a little bit, uh, got a little more uh, <clears throat> poop to it, I guess. And uh, had real good luck with these guys. Uh, this particular uh, customer wanted to have 4.8 or, um, four, or 16 ohm, and so therefore uh, we have the extra leads for that. So, I, the holes are a little bit um, on a standard Princeton chassis. They're, they're not spaced out properly. So, what I do for this transformer, that is, is I will set that transformer on the chassis. And the hole that's near the power tubes is the one I start as a guide. And then I'll come back and I will mark where I'm going to drill my next hole. And there it is. So we'll head over to drill press and uh, we'll punch a hole there and then we'll come back and mount the transformers mounted. It's good and strong. Next step I do is get these little rubber grommets here. Nice and soft. Kind of get those started in there. Once I get them pretty much in the in the hole there, then what I usually do is I'll take a screwdriver, just kind of set in the middle. Kind of go around with it a little bit like that and seat it in there. Put my hand underneath, make sure it's not buckled up. And uh, that's it. Pretty simple. I do two of them here. And another one for uh, the other set of wires out of the output tranny. Take our screwdriver, give it a little spin, work it in there good. There it is. Checking underneath. Quick We're word about go. the output transformer. Uh, you'll save yourself a little headache if you orientate this guy right. So you got your plate wires coming here, and uh, I see that problem come up just a little bit. I put those guys to go between these two six v sixes, okay? Because that's where they're going to terminate. And then of course the uh, the output wires for your speaker jack I put over here right next to your phase inverter. So. I can't tell you how many times I bolted this thing in here, got it backwards, had to pull it out, kind of a pain in the neck. So it's something to kind of uh, just pay attention to. Least. I put a couple zip ties right here. Do I need to do it? No. Do I do it? Yeah, because I'm kind of anal about this stuff. So I put it on there, kind of keep the wires from pulling. If you really got crazy, you could put one on the inside too. Uh, but I usually do it just kind of keep everything together. What I do is mounting the filter cap bracket here. Now, another thing, you know, you get in a hurry and you put this guy on there like so, and then you're going, wait a minute, I can't get a screwdriver in there to adjust it. Put this screw out here like so next to your output or your power transformer. I'm not going to go through all the different holes that you kind of have to enlarge depending on what screws and, uh, and nuts you use. But, uh, again, these are all little things that uh, will eat up time. 
uh, if you have to redo it. You'll notice too that there's a hole right here and right here that's for your um, for your standoffs for the um, for the turret board. So you got plenty of room to get in there later and put the screw in there and bolt that guy down. So orientation is kind of important on this stuff. Uh, it'll save you some trouble. Down cap. I am using, I don't know if you got enough room up here to see this. But it is a JJ 20, 20, 20, 40. And uh, I get that again from Doug. And uh, he also has the mounting brackets for it, which are larger than, let's say, you know, other types of caps. Been using these guys, happy with them so far. This is another thing, orientation is nice to have. Get the three prongs here towards the power tranny, the two out this way. You're gonna have some ground going here and you'll, you'll see later on the video. Uh, this will keep you from loosening everything up and twisting it around. Uh, I usually take the bolt out of this bracket so I can spread it apart and get that guy in there. It's kind of a tight fit. Uh, afterwards, you go ahead and start it back in, put your screw in there, tighten her up. And uh, that guy will be mounted, you will not have to I go ahead that. and mount the power transformer now. Some people don't like doing it. I personally do. Orientation again matters. Uh, as you can see, you've got your uh, filament wires here, the green. I always like to put those towards uh, the side where the pilot's going to be, right? So the pilot's going to be right over here towards the edge. And I'm going to go ahead and drop this guy in there like so. And um, yeah, it fits. there we go. And go ahead and bolt it down. Uh, sometimes I'll use a washer on the inside uh, or just uh, kind of use these little bolts that I get here that have uh, the little lock uh, star washer on. Those are fine too. Um, you'll end up probably pulling those guys off again as you get through the build to put some ground lugs and uh, things of that nature. That guy mounted in there, kind of separated the wires a little bit. I uh, got some rectifier, wire, rectifier wires and uh, primary rectifier other set and we've got our filament wires and a little trick that all ant builders know how to do and probably I don't even know why I'm showing you this but you chuck up the wires in your drill get them nice and tight get them a little spin. and get them where you want them back the wire off take it out of the chuck and hey nice and neat helps with noise Helps with neatness. I'm kind of a neat freak when it comes to the inside of these amps. Uh, probably too much so, but I like doing it. And uh, that's the only kind of work I'll put out. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and spin up the rest of these wires. So uh, and, uh, wires are, are spun up here. Uh, this is going to go to our bias feed. And we've got this green center tap here for our filaments. I don't use that. I use a couple of 100 ohm resistors, uh, usually one watt or better. And I tie those into the pilot uh, light to ground. And this guy here, I cut it off about, eh, in case I ever want to use it again, I give it about probably three or four inches. I cut it off, put a piece of shrink wrap on it. And then what you can do is you can actually tuck it inside your transformer there so it's not all ugly and hanging out. So I'll go ahead and, and okay, do that. A little yeah. something about shrink wrap. Again, all you pros know all this stuff. I put a piece on there and I pull it out and I extend it past the wire then you set down your thing you grab a pair of pliers you grab the end and you just give it a little squeeze like that hold it there hold it hold it let go get you some nippers Cut off the little end here. And there you go. It's kind of sealed up on the end. Have a nice little touch. I'm not sure if you guys do that. Again, these are Mike's now, methods. Tuck the center tap for the filaments inside the transformer. Nice and clean. And we're going to run these to our rectifier tube at some point. Okay. This guy's going to come over here to our pilot. This guy's going to come over here to our power. This guy's going to come up here to the rectifier. Nice and neat. Name of the game for me. Plus, it's got to sound good, and it's got to work every time you turn it on. That's important, too. <laughs> All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the rectifier tube and the power sockets. And I use these wonderful Belden 
tube sockets. I've used all kinds of different ones, and these guys are my absolute favorite. It's all I do anymore. I like that they're numbered. I like that the uh, terminals on the back side are nice and thick, and they're not all cheap and flimsy like some of the uh, China ones that I've got. And uh, you just set that guy in there like so. This Hoffman chassis that I got is already drilled out big enough where I don't have to hog that hole out like I would if this were a, a straight fender chassis. Now, the key way for the tube, the way I do it, is I point, if I was to run it this way, it would point towards the inside of the chassis looking at the power transformer. All you gotta remember, is if you're gonna do it this way, is point it outward, just like so. I think down the road, when we start doing some grounding and stuff, uh, you'll see that it, it uh, makes a lot more sense to do it that way, again, for a neater job. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some tube clips, some nuts and bolts, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, secure it are installed. Okay, now, listen guys, do yourself a favor. These are 632s here. Don't order just as many as you think you need for the job. Get a bunch of extras. In fact, buy a hundred each, you know, or whatever. Just, just get them. These, uh, they're, they're not expensive, and man, they're sure handy to have around. There's the ones I'm using for the tube sockets. They might be a little bit longer than I need, but I like having a little extra, uh, you know, meat on there, um, and don't over tighten them because you know you can snap these guys. I think these uh, these look like they're probably uh, half inch by 632. Uh, I use a lot of those. I also buy uh, 832s and uh, 432s, and so and I I, get, I buy them in bulk. I get quite a bit of them, and when I start getting low, I just order some more. Um, but again, these are the sorts of things that uh, you're working in the shop and you lose one or you strip one out or you break one off. And if you get just what you need, then uh, now, you're, uh, now you're out of business until you get more or it's another trip to the hardware store. So anyway, we're going to do the, uh, we're going to do the uh, preamp tubes. So and let's uh, talk about right. orientation on these guys for a minute. Uh, I, you know, unless I'm building a custom chassis and drilling it, punching it out myself, um, the way I do this is I always install these guys with pin 1 and 9, so you got the little spread there, right, towards the front of the chassis. So if you're looking at the front of the chassis, you got the angle here. Those guys go in that orientation. Why? Do you think it matters? You can wire them up. It doesn't matter, but I think the heater wires kind of lay on there a little bit better down the road. Again, uh... All the stuff I'm showing on this video are the way that I do it. There's a lot of right ways to do the same thing. This just happens to be my uh, tube sockets are installed. Um, I used uh, 440 uh, nuts and bolts. Again, half inch. I said 432 uh, earlier. Um, yeah, I screwed up. It's 440. We turn this chassis over now. And uh, there they are. Now, once in a while, I'll take some red paint, you know, or any kind of thing, and I'll put on those threads and lock them up. You can use some some red or blue Loctite on there if you want. Um, you know, it's kind of your build. You can do it the way you like it. Um, quite honestly, they don't often come loose, but uh, I guess the thing to remember is don't over-tighten them, and because uh, you will break them off. I know that from personal experience. Okay, so I'm gonna move on, and last thing I'm gonna do here is, or not the last thing, but the next thing I'm gonna do is install the reverb. Next, reverb transformer. There the little guy is. Uh, as you can see, I put another uh, grommet in there. Uh, I take my wires and I pull them out straight on that guy, and then I mount them towards the back of the chassis, which is closest to that grommet where it's gonna go in through the chassis. All right. Finish mount. Nothing to write home about. It's on there. Might have an easier time without goofing that grommet up. You run those wires through one at a time. You kind of keep them straight, wrap them around a little bit. Stick them through the other side of the chassis. I've got a pre-fit turret board. And we've got the power transformer mounted, tube sockets mounted, output transformer, reverb transformer, preamp tube sockets. We've got our uh, JJ filter cap installed. We've got the chassis punched with uh, Whatever info you want to put in there. I usually put my name and the date. You know, I started putting serial numbers in them after a while. So, uh, for no other reason than uh, at this, I just do it. It's fun. Um, now, so many of you might say, well, hey, when do we get to the fun part? You know, uh, doing the components on the board and the pots and so on and so forth. Well, 
Before you mount your pilot and your pots, of course, you're going to need your faceplate and your backplate. So um, I have some custom made. Um, you, you know, you can get all kinds of different ones. You can get generic ones and you can uh, paint your name on the front of it or however you want to do it. Trophy shop. There's, there's lots of different ways. Uh, one place that I really like, U.S. Nameplate. And uh, give them a call. Talk to Kendi over the new U.S. Nameplate. Uh, they'll do your artwork for you. And send them a CAD drawing or, you know, an, or a sample. And uh, they will make up your nameplates. They're great. So we'll get to that later on down the road when the plates, uh, are, when it's time to do that. Uh, one thing I won't, I, that I don't recommend you do is bolt that board in there and start populating it in the amp. It's much harder to work on. And uh, we're going to go through that once I start the board. And I'm going to show you the, uh, the mic method and how I do it. And uh, a couple little uh, tips and tricks on, on how to get your wire in there. I'm using Teflon wire. Um, you can use PVC, you can use cloth, whatever your flavor is. I happen to like Teflon for these amps. I use a lot of cloth too. I kind of use, uh, it depends on what I'm building, really, and how I feel that day. But uh, I don't necessarily think one is better than the other. It's just what you like to work with. So anyway, um, I will be back as we move on.